Hi friends, uh, today we discuss about the PostgreSQL architecture. In the server architecture, we will, we will be discussing these uh, four things background process, memory allocation, logical structure, and database file layout. This is the basic overview of server architecture. Whenever we start the Postgres server database cluster, the main Postgres server process get created, which was earlier known as Postmaster uh, process, but the term was deprecated. Uh, this is the main process that get uh, created postgres server process uh, which will be running uniquely on your port number uh, this process will be internally running some other background process for the internal activities and also whenever a client makes a request to access the database he will be first authenticated by the postgres server process using these configuration files pghbf is nothing but host based authentications when he is authenticated a new child process will be created which is called the postgres process and uh, this client will be making further communications through this uh, postgres process only this process is also called the backend process and also in certain scenarios there will be a frequent uh, connections and disconnections for suppose in web based applications in such uh, cases there will be a more stress on this postgres pro uh, postgres server process so in order to overcome this issue uh, we will be using uh, an a middleware called pg bouncer which will be handling such frequent connections and disconnections this serves the same purpose as a postgres server process this will be this will provide the pooling feature to access uh, between the clients and the server now we will have a brief discussion about the background process uh, once the postgres server gets started it creates the postgres server process it will be initiating this uh, background process these are called the logger check pointer background writers wall writer auto vacuum launcher stats collector and logical replication launchers this logger process will be writing errors warning messages to the log files check pointer check pointer process will be performing automatic checkpoints checkpoints in the sense it will be flushing uh, 30 pages in the buffer uh, to the uh, disk and uh, background writer process this process uh, will be help this process also will be doing the flushing of the dirty pages uh, in the shared buffer to the uh, to the disk uh, if you can see uh, this uh, background writer uh, checkpointer uh, run the same purpose but uh, background writer will be initiated between the checkpoints so that it will be reducing the stress on the checkpointer and then we will have the wall writer this wall writer uh, process will be writing data in the uh, content stored in the wall buffers to the wall files which are the transaction log files for the postgres sql server and auto vacuum launcher this auto vacuum launcher process will be initiating the vacuum and analyze operations in order to reclaim the empty space from the tables we have to perform vacuum operations and this initiating the vacuum operation is taken care by the auto vacuum launcher process and then the stats collector so it collects and reports the information about the uh, server activity and uh, table usage statistics and this will be updating this uh, information to the optimizers and then logical replication launcher this process will be used when we perform replication operations we, you can see this in linux mission we have started uh, postgres server process and this background process get created and now we will have a brief discussion about the memory allocation memory allocation in the postgres server can be broadly categorized into two areas shared memory area and a local memory area the shared memory area mainly used by postgres server for the internal activities in the shared memory we have shared buffers by having the most frequently accessed data in the shared buffers uh, these will be used to reduce stress on the disk io and uh, and then we have uh, wall buffers wall buffers are like these are the transactional log files of postgres sql any changes that we are making onto the data get written into the wall buffer and wall writer will be writing these uh, changes on the wall buffer to the wall files uh, once they got committed and uh, these uh, files are very useful for the backups and point in time recovery and also we also see this background process uh, this background process also get allocated uh, some amount of memory by, from the shared memory only Whenever the logs by applied by the PostgreSQL server, uh, memory get uh, utilized from the shared memory only. Now coming to the local memory, we can see here these backend. These are the backend process. Uh, whenever there is a backend process for uh, query processing, this local memory will be utilized. Uh, any query that involves for internal short operations like order by uh, merge and any any hash table operation like hash join, etc. etc. will be 
they will be they will be utilizing the memory allocated by the work memory only and come another parameter called maintenance work memory uh, this parameter will be useful for doing maintenance operations like vacuum uh, creating index and doing the re-indexing everything for this maintenance uh, activities uh, this amount of me uh, this, um, this memory will be utilized and the temporary buffers uh, these are used for uh, storing the temporary tables this is the brief introduction about the memory allocation so far we have discussed about the uh, background process that created when postgres server starts and uh, other backend process that get created after it get authenticated authentication by the main postgres server process and uh, how they will be accessing the this backend process how they will be utilizing the lock memory and the whole backend process and then uh, shared memory we have discussed and coming to the logical structure uh, We'll, now we will discuss about the logical structure hierarchy uh, at the top of the level we have the cluster uh, which uniquely runs on the port number under cluster we have databases for databases uh, we have users and uh, table spaces for the data to be stored under databases uh, we have schemas uh, under schemas we create tables views procedures and uh, functions this is a simple uh, logical hierarchy and then uh, now we'll discuss about the database file layout uh, and we have both configuration files and database uh, files will be stored on the single cluster cluster only uh, global under global uh, directory we have metadata and system log system catalog information will be available under base uh, base directory we have actual uh, database files uh, will be residing in here residing here and uh, pg uh, wall this is the right head log files where uh, actual log files get uh, stored here under this uh, pg underscore x80 we have the transaction commit status files data will be available here and we also have a configurations file uh, postgres config and postgres auto config files and uh, uh, postgres configuration and postgres auto config files see uh, this by default when server gets uh, when the cluster gets started postgres dot auto config file uh, will be empty whenever we make any changes to the postgres uh, configuration file uh, whenever we change postgres configuration file using alter system command those changes get reflected in the post uh, postgres dot auto config file uh, at a time we'll have a basic uh, look out of these physical files once if you look here this is our uh, dot cluster directory under this we have a base uh, directory whenever we create a database uh, these data files will be created with a unique they will be created with a unique id these are the external database i have created and uh, these are the global files which contains the metadata and system catalog information and uh, this is the pg wall postgres transaction log file data will be available here now we look into this postgres auto and postgres config if you look at here this is the original configuration file if you make any changes in this configuration file using alter system command uh, those changes get reflected in the uh, configuration this is empty i have changed this uh, max connection to 120 using alter system command see see this is my max connection 100 those alt using alter system statement i have changed the parameter those changes get uh, updated here if you want to uh, come to the default value by running this alter system command i can get to the default value and this parameter get uh, erased here i think now we got the basic overview of the postgres server architecture thank you